Uh, you never know how it's going to work out. The both teams like to push the ball. You know, I, I, and I've learned this over the years. When you think it's going to be a fast-paced game, mm -hmm. it's going to be a low-scoring game. Mm -hmm. um, you, you think about our two scores. If I told you that we would score 54 points at Notre Dame, you would have flipped it and said that would have had to be the Virginia game. Mm -hmm. These games are so weird. Uh, it's different. Uh, on paper, both teams like to get out. Both teams like to run. Uh, I can see that, uh, but I don't know. You know, we just obviously, you know, for us, we're just going to stay the course. We're going to try to play our style of basketball, which is trying to get out and run, and you know, obviously to you know get into our presses and we can score the basketball. When we score the basketball, would be great. You know, Kevin, with all the perimeter options that you have, do you have a specific rotation that you like to keep, or do you go hot hand? No, I think with this group, you go hot hand. Um, you know, we don't necessarily, you know, I, I know DJ Horn is playing really good basketball, which is great. But on any given night, I feel like Casey can have a great night. I think Jake Taylor can have a great night. Um, I think those three dudes really can, you know, get hot, you know, on a given night. And then, you know, we're substitute. Michael's doing a really good job of, um, you know, facilitating. He's not really looking to score the basketball. But it will be one of those two, one of those three guys who can score the ball for us on perimeter. I think you've had six different guys this season already either lead the team or tie for the team leading the scoring. Mm -hmm. You ever had a team that balanced? I don't know, but it certainly wasn't last year because you no. know those two guys <laughs> could really score the basketball in seventeen, and then DJ Burns was sli he was sneaking in, be the leading scorer. I don't know that I've had it that way. Uh, it's settling me in a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've got a bunch of guys that I said at the beginning of the year I think could happen that all could be, you know, 12 to 15 points a game, and that's what they are. You know, we got we got four guys that I think on any given night can get us 12 to 15 points and somebody can get hot and get a little bit more. With, uh, with Baycock obviously being a, a constant problem for you on both mm -hmm. ends of the court, do you, do you think, do you look to maybe start Ben Middlebrooks or be all right tomorrow night to match up against him? Oh, I ain't giving you the put game a big guy. <laughs> That's the, that's too early. This is going to be played everywhere. I can't tell you who I'm starting. No, we'll put a lot of different bodies on him. Um, he is playing extremely good basketball. Um, you know, uh, last game, you know, before that, I thought he was playing just okay. They were more going perimeter than anything. And then they, they committed to getting the ball inside against a really good player in P.J. Hall, and he ends up with 16-14. I don't think you can play him chip with one guy. You know, we, we're fortunate on this team that we, we got three guys that can run at him, but you'll see DJ, you'll see Mo, you'll also see Ben, all of them will guard him. But I ain't telling you he's starting. <laughs> I don't know yet. This is we got one more day of practice and a, a shoot around, so right. depends on who played well. Another yeah. matchup probably seems like it could be Harrison Ingram, who's kind of a different kind of guy, six seven, two twenty, just talk about the form. Yeah, I mean Harrison is doing a really good job for him. Um, is more they're asking they're actually running a lot of isolation plays for him where he's posting up and you know getting to his spot you know he's doing a good job he's a good player that was a great addition to their to their program because he can play some four and he can play some three for the guys. She's seen a little bit of Diara over the last two games since the break, but what's his status as of right now? I know you had mentioned earlier in the season an ankle injury, but where is he at right now from a health standpoint? And could we expect to see him a little bit more maybe tomorrow night? Yeah, you know, uh, if you think about this, Corey, um, he's back healthy. Um, a lot of our games now will come down to the type of, you know, front line we play against. Mm -hmm. Boston College, you know, bigger guys. We wanted some guys to be able to switch off. Um, this game, we just, we, you know, obviously we just played. We played UVA. More perimeter popping, pick and pop guys than anything. Uh, I'll see, you'll see more, more, I think, more in this game. We need him to be a, a big presence around the rim. We need him to rebound the basketball to be able to play. Against UVA, he would have been lost. We were running around, and then Ben started playing really well, and so we kind of went with those two guys. Um, but when we get down to it, you know, as MJ Rice learns more of a small forward, I don't want to play him as a fourth guard. I want to be able to play where we can have Mo more strictly at the, at the uh, power forward position, Ben and both DJ strictly at the center as we continue to go along. AC and DJ obviously gone through the battles against UNC and Middlebrooks has played them in a different uniform. Do you talk to the other guys, the, the newcomers, about what, what Wednesday night will be like at all? Well, no, I, I leave it up to those guys. I really do. They, you know, you know, we, as coaches, we create all of this, hey, this is that. Players, man, these guys, uh, you know, the Duke Carolina players are 
25 minutes, I don't know exactly, down the road, these are all these guys compete and play AAU. They know. They know the competition. They travel in the same circles. They hang with the same people. They even probably even try to talk to the same girls at some point. Um, so they know. I let them. I let those guys create that opportunity. We talk about obviously. Um, you know, I'm more into a scouting. This is what this is about. You know, obviously a great atmosphere because of who we're playing and where we're playing. You know, think about this now. We're the only. You know, um, I think. Conference that's got you know, four Power Five teams in our state, who are all really good, by the way. And so it doesn't, you know, if you the motivation is here's here we go. We got a good team coming in. It is a team down the street that we got to be ready to play and be excited about it and be ready to go. Yeah. You know? I know you you don't you kind of mentioned it there that you don't need the extra motivation for a game like this. I mean, this is the first time since I think like seventy two or seventy four that both of you all are you know, undefeated in ACC play. You don't need the extra motivation, but do you ever kind of take a, a deep breath and think how cool it is to be in college basketball history in, in this play? Yeah, I'm grateful. I mean, any think about this at NC State, when you drop 74 and any anything you say, well, I get excited. I mean, 74 and 83 are magical numbers at NC State. So we're proud, uh, you know, I just, I, you know, we, a few years ago we'd run five road games and that was hadn't been done since 74 so we got excited about it we were I think we were four and nine and then we rallied off of some of those were four and eight um, so when you get when any time and and that doesn't mean now that we're the 74 team or the 83 team but when you get the when people start talking about records that you haven't done since that time it says a lot about our kids and program and it's hard to win in college basketball and just think about that here at NC State uh, we're three and zero hasn't been done since '74, so I give these guys a lot of credit. But now you got to move on and try to figure out how to get the next one. That's what we do. Yeah. You just were talking when someone was asking about the scoring depth. You were talking about things are kind of settling out a little bit. Do you how much more settling out? I guess is there. I mean, it's still early, the first week of January, basically, and there's still. I mean, you played games, but there's a long way to go. Like, mm -hmm. how do you look at what you got and where how it's how close it is to what you envision? Yeah, we, we've had to, and we've had to, we, we're a little different than everybody, and I'll say this because um, we've had to add MJ Rice back. And so we try to get a little chemistry and figure out, all right, where can he play and, you know, be successful and not disrupt what we got going on. Everyone added the two-time transfer, but in our situation, it ended up being two guys because of MJ Rice and, and now Cam Woods. So we try to figure them out. So our biggest thing is how to not disrupt the chemistry that we've already developed with a bunch of guys who have played together. And then I had two really good players. And sometimes it's tough um, because, you know, those guys are good players too. But when you're playing good basketball, do you, do you mess with that? How do you get them in? And that's been one of the things that as a coaching staff, we're trying to figure out, all right, where can we insert this guy and he, you know, help us and help us win games opposed to just saying we got to put him in. You don't have those games now because the non-conference is gone, the scrimmages and the exhibitions are gone. You're in ACC play, and you can't tamper, you can't tamper with a lot of things. So you just got to figure out, you know, how to do that. So that's been our biggest adjustment. Um, I like uh, the way that DJ Horn is playing basketball. You know, he's starting to buy in. Uh, Jaden Taylor is, um, you know, on the defensive end, he's become a monster. He's really good at it. And what's happening is he's learning how to defend and now score the basketball. It's kind of hard, it's a, it's a, it's not an easy thing. There's only been a couple guys that could do that, one of them being Jarkel Joyner, that could score the back, that could really pick you up 94 feet and then be able to score himself. He had he averaged almost 16 points, 17 points a game. Now Jaden Taylor's really figuring out how to do that. And usually you don't get that on your own basketball teams. You get the best defender, he's the best defender, but he may, he may end up with six to eight points opposed to averaging 12 to 14 points. Kevin, have you seen any difference in R.J. Davis when you got him last year to what Yeah, it's, it's so hard to believe that R.J. Davis has been in college for so long and he's having his best year this year. Like he, and, and when I say that, all of his years have been really good. Um, but he is playing at a high level. I think he's leading our league and scoring. Um, you know, he's – you know, they play him on the ball, they play him with the ball in his hand. Uh, probably the most dangerous guy in our league that, you know, with the ball in his hand because he can create his own shot. But he's having a tremendous year, which is, um, 
it's surprising because he's had great years anyway, but he's really playing at a high level right now. He might be leading the free throw shooting team. Is that right? He's yeah, I want to say he was in the 90s or somewhere there. Yeah. yeah. So we, that means we can't foul him. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned Jaden's defense. Is that his, is that his guy on well, I think you know, the way we play, you're going to see a lot of different people on it. Just like Baycock, we don't, you know, m most times um, initially when we pick you up when we're in a press, you're going to see initial guys, but they're going to be different guys that's on him. And, you know, Casey will have an opportunity. I've been trying to push Casey as, um, you know, the best defender on our team. And I told him the other day I'm done saying that because last year I said it and Jock Hill was the best defender. This year I said it now. JT and try to motivate him a little bit to just to be the second guy, which he can be. Yeah. <laughs> so when you talked about the depth of this team too, it seems like the roles are what's really being established now at this point. How much are you seeing guys really buy into those roles now that you know, the team's having success lately too? Yeah, I think everybody is um, getting comfortable playing with one another. They they're getting comfortable understanding that um, this is what we need. The one thing that this team you know, we struggled with so much early in the non-conference is trying to figure out scouting reports and all that other stuff. Well, we've grown over the last month. Um, believe it or not, even though we didn't play well offensively at Notre Dame, that time after Christmas, he had us a chance to sit down and watch a little film. We got a chance to clean up a lot of things. And I think that's one of the reasons that we wore, I mean, that we uh, won the game against UVA. Where we've grown is we're starting to understand an offensive scout report. What do you have to do to score the basketball against a certain team? But how do you stop them? And, you know, that's a maturity of the team. Even though we had some older guys, we were so new. Six guys playing, adding two more, making it eight. We were almost like freshmen because we, everybody was coming from different programs. And that's what you're going to get. But we've grown in that area over the last month or so. I Can saw I earlier this morning that two NIL collectives are coming together in one organization, um, one pack, I think is what it's called. How, how does that impact you? Does that make things any easier for you? Oh, that's great. I mean, I just um, bring all of that money from wherever it's at, <laughs> and we can get it all. That's what it is. I don't know. It's, I, I'm grateful for anyone and everyone that donates to our collective. Um, I have no idea how it will help or, well, I should say this, it's, it can only help. I, can, I should say that it's not going to hurt us. And the folks over at the collective, um, from what I've seen from a distance, have done a really good job for not just you know our, our basketball program, but you know all of our sports. And it's a it's a must have. It's a you know you got to you got to do it in today's world. And you know I'm grateful and thank everybody in, in you know Wolfpack Nation that donates to the collectives. And I'm glad it, it can't hurt when everybody comes together. The past few games, Michael O'Connell's minutes have gone up. He's got 17 assists. You know, where have you kind of seen him kind of grow more comfortable now in the offense? Well, he stopped shooting the ball, and I'm not saying that in a negative way. I mean, he started becoming, he started running our team. And what happens is when you shoot the ball and it doesn't go in, it affects you a little bit instead of playing to who he is. And now the ball's going in the basket. And so Michael's become very important because of the fact that we can move DJ Horn over to the two and let him score, but he's also a willing passer to everyone. He knows how to play. You think about his plays, he had a three-point play, didn't a four-point play, didn't make his free throw, but late in the shot clock, he had a great drive where he got to the free throw line. So he's probably more of a pure point guard than I've had in a long time, and I'm actually liking the way he's playing basketball. Yeah. And you guys are one of the best teams in the country now taking care of the basketball. You know, how does does that you know surprise you with the amount of new guys you've added you know this year? Or, you yeah, know? yeah. But knock on wood, um, my teams and it's it's I, I give the assistant coaches credit and everything else. Knock on woods, the last couple of years and even before that, our teams even the way we play, a lot of people handling the ball. We've always been able to take care of the basketball, which is really good. It says a lot about you know our coaches and what they're doing with them. But you know we value possessions and we try to win the possession game. So. It's not great for us to force turnovers and then get it right back. So we try to, you know, win that battle every time. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.